how to stop a heart attack. What would you do? Well, the first thing I'm going to say is check with your doctor before implementing what I'm going to tell you. This is not meant to replace your medical care or your medication. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do is call 911, of course. If you have some aspirin, go ahead and take it. Uh, between 75 and 100 milligrams would help. If you've been prescribed nitroglycerin, you can take some of that. That's a vasodilator. It can actually help pull someone out of an, an angina attack. So what's happening when you're getting a heart attack? Well, you're getting a cramp of your heart, okay? Because the main artery to the heart, it's called the coronary artery, is either constricted, it's going into a spasm by itself for some reason, and then the muscle of the heart cramps because it doesn't have enough oxygen, okay? And that's what you feel when you have chest pain. So basically, it's like a muscle cramp. There are several things that can actually help that situation. When someone takes nitroglycerin, for example, which by the way, you may have heard of nitroglycerin being very explosive, right? Well, the difference between that and the drug nitroglycerin is the drug is much less concentrated, okay? but they're basically the same molecule. And nitroglycerin increases something called nitric oxide, which is a, a vasodilator. So vasodilation increases oxygen. The main remedy I wanna talk about is vitamin E, okay, in relationship to what it can do to a heart cramp. If someone is deficient in vitamin E, what happens is they get muscle damage, not just to the skeletal muscle, but also the cardiac muscle itself. So you actually get a breakdown of muscle tissue when you have a vitamin E deficiency. So that's pretty wild that a deficiency of a vitamin will cause that much damage, but it can cause extensive degeneration to your muscles. Now, also, if you're deficient in vitamin E, there'll be a delayed repair action after you exercise. For those people that exercise on a regular basis, they should not be doing the regular amount of vitamin E. They should be doing extra because the more that you exercise, the more that you use your muscles, the greater the demand for vitamin E. Vitamin E is a fat-soluble antioxidant and it works very powerfully on your muscles, on your cell membranes, protecting them against oxidative stress, free radical damage. And it also works on the inside of that artery, the coronary artery to protect it from damage, inflammation. And you can imagine when you exercise, you're generating a tremendous amount of oxidation and free radicals. Well, vitamin E can actually counter that and increase the repair of your muscles after exercise. If you're deficient in vitamin E, you're gonna feel weakness within your muscles. They're always gonna be sore, achy, and they're not gonna be as strong. So vitamin E has been shown to effectively repair stroke-related vascular damage and it's a very potent fat soluble antioxidant. Now, if you do a deep dive into the research in relationship between vitamin E and cardiovascular accidents, you're gonna find mixed reviews. But if you actually read those studies, you're gonna find there's a big difference between the type of vitamin E that they use, okay? The type of vitamin E that they use when you see negative outcomes, like vitamin E causes more heart attacks, cancer, et cetera, they're using synthetic vitamin E, okay? They're not using a, a food concentrate. They're not using the natural version of the vitamin E complex. Now, the type of vitamin E I'm gonna recommend that you, you know, keep around the house would be tocotrienols, okay? Now, what is tocotrienols? Well, it's a little different than tocopherols. They recently discovered tocotrienols as part of the vitamin E complex. Um, maybe you've heard of uh, tocopherols, alpha, beta, delta, gamma. We also have alpha, beta, delta, gamma tocotrienols, okay? And you have other things in the vitamin E complex. But the tocotrienols are much more potent than the tocopherols. They're like 50 times stronger. So they can really help you and also help the heart, especially when the heart needs more oxygen. So the demand for oxygen goes down when you have enough vitamin E. But a good mix of tocotrienols would be something I would recommend as your vitamin E. Number two, increasing nitric oxide. How do you do that? Very simply, you don't need anything for this. All you need to do is slow your breath down, okay? And breathe through your nose. Like a nice slow inhalation and exhalation, okay? Back and forth through your nose. 
Because think about it, when you're having a heart attack, you're going to go into what's called a panic attack, right? And you're going to breathe excessively and you might hyperventilate. And guess what that's going to do to your heart? It's actually going to lower the oxygen to your heart. You start building up too much CO2. I mean, think about what happens when someone's in a panic attack. I mean, they are, they're hyperventilating. Quick story. I was at a restaurant with one of my uh, old patients and we were having lunch and chatting. But as she was consuming the soup, I noticed like she was like, you know, doing this. And I'm like, oh my goodness, you're choking right now on the food. And, and I'm thinking, okay, how do I do the Heimlich maneuver? And I'm just you know, running through what I have to do really quickly. So I had her stand up and I did the Heimlich maneuver from behind and that didn't work. She's like choking, her eyeballs are popping out, her face is turning red. And what was really bizarre is everyone sitting around the restaurant are just standing there, um, just looking at me. They're not saying anything. They're like not calling 911 or anything. So what I did is I just said, relax. Just relax your throat. Just don't panic. And all of a sudden that apparently worked, right? It kind of brought her out of that stress mode because the stress creates a vasoconstriction. The stress freezes up the nervous system. It shuts down oxygen. It can really create a situation. So anytime someone's under a panic attack or even a heart attack, they should slow down their breathing and, and breathe at a, a even pace of inhalation and exhalation through the nose, okay? that will greatly help, um, especially the coronary artery. It's gonna open it up, it's gonna relax the arteries. I will put a video down below for more data on why that works. Number three, if you have some garlic, cod liver oil, or natal kinase, all three of these are great natural blood thinning compounds, okay? They'll thin the blood, um, they help reduce clots. Now, just as a side effect, and I should probably do a video on, on strokes, but if you get a stroke, the first thing you need to do definitely is call 911 because there's a certain uh, medication that you can take to, if you get it in time, to help uh, prevent the damage that's occurring in the brain. Now, ultimately, you want to prevent a heart attack. If you haven't seen my video on the relationship between the benefits of keto on the cardiovascular system and intermittent fasting, you should definitely watch that right now. It's right here.